What's up guys, hello and welcome back to Boost Vlogs, the most sporadic tuning series on YouTube. So today I'm in my 1992 Mazda Miata with a 2001 VVT engine swap, fully forged, medium sized turbo, E85, and it makes some good power, 420 powers to be exact. But today I wanna mess around with something that I've actually had a good amount of people ask me about and that's how much power would your car make if it didn't have a turbo on it? You know, it's got a built engine, it's gotta make pretty good power. And I think I think there's some confusion behind that because people hear built engine and they automatically think more power. But it's really how the engine's built that can make it have more or less power. In fact, the engine that's in this car actually has some disadvantages against a stock VVT engine. Number one thing being it's got 10% less compression. This is nine to one compression. A stock VVT Miata engine is 10 to one compression. And the other big limiting factor is that it's got a potato stuck in the exhaust known as the turbocharger. That's a kind of a big restriction and just gets in the way when the engine is trying to flow out its exhaust gases. Now, of course, when that turbo is hooked up, it spins up fast using those exhaust gases and helps force more air into the engine, and then it makes a whole bunch of power. But those two things uh, really work against it, as opposed to, say, building something with stock compression, or even higher than stock compression, and having a tuned header on it. Now, the things that I have going for me to make more power than stock, which is roughly 110 wheel horsepower, is about what a stock VVT car will make. I am on E85. I do have a much better flowing intake manifold than the, the stock VVT manifold is the worst of all the NB manifolds. If you have a VVT car and you just swap to either a 99-2000 manifold or even better the square top, you can gain power that way. But anyways, very mild head work. It is stock cams, but I have back cut valves and just minor, minor porting, so that will help. But I'm kind of interested to see. I think the car is going to make roughly 135 or maybe 140 horsepower at the most, and the tool I'll be using to measure that today is called Virtual Dyno. If you want a video on why it is actually an accurate tool for measuring horsepower when properly used, I'll link that down below. I've actually tested it against real dyno numbers and it's pretty spot on. I am going to adjust the wastegate on the turbo in the fully open position. Now one note is if you have a Borg Warner EFR like I have on my car, you cannot just disconnect the wastegate and run then run it. Uh, you'll see from this clip right here, if you adjust the wastegate all the way, it will contact the turbine wheel and you do not want that to happen. Now, if you have a Garrett, every Garrett I've seen at least, you can just unclip the wastegate and let it flap open and it's not gonna hurt anything. So basically I'm just going to adjust that thing open right now. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I mean, maybe I'll mess with VVT a little bit. I don't know, that's why it's boost vlogs. I'm just taking the car out to have fun. Gonna go do some pulls and I hope you guys enjoy it. Oh yeah, and I'll be uploading the results of some performance tests into the Global Hairdresser FlexOff. I'll also link that down below. It's a database that I have started creating with uh, everyone submitting their performance data from their um, Miatas. And um, yeah, just lots of stuff for you guys to check out during this quarantine, which I hope everyone is doing well and being safe out there. All right, so I got my Turbo Smart wastegate actuator right there. It is a dual port that I'm using as a single port right now. Now on the other end of your actuator, some of them are fixed, but some of them are adjustable. Okay, I've adjusted it all the way to the end of the rod, as far as I could go, but it doesn't seem very far open. So hopefully this entire video isn't a waste of time. The more I think about it, the more I think the propped open wastegate's not gonna work. Too much spool, dude. The EFR just spools too fast, too easy. Obviously, I have to uh, do a little more tomfoolery to get this thing to actually not make boost. This video should actually be called How to Remove 300 Horsepower from Your Miata, which is essentially what I just did. So now we just got a little short ram intake and on the turbo, an old sock. Hose clamped on there so the turbo doesn't suck anything big in because it's still gonna suck. It's probably gonna be pretty disappointing to most of you, but uh, I find this stuff very interesting. When I talk about wheel horsepower, I'm always talking about dyno jet numbers. It's the most commonly used dyno. It's the only type of dyno that I use. And when I put everything in virtual dyno, I use the dyno jet settings. So it's trying to replicate that. My guess is 135, but uh, we're gonna see how close I am. All 
right, are you guys ready? I have not opened these yet. I do not know what they look like. Let's see how much power this beast makes. What do you think, what do you think? It's probably gonna be all messed up. Oh, there's, oh my, okay, look at that. The runs are basically identical, but let's see. Oh my God, it's actually pathetic. 119 horsepower, nine horsepower over stock. Dang, and I was saying it felt decent. That's actually kind of sad. Like I said, there's a friggin' turbo plugging up the exhaust, and uh, it's low compression, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but it's a little disappointing. So if I adjust the uh, SAE setting there, so it's 100 degree air temp, it does bump us up to 122 horsepower. So, I mean, it's pretty stout. So what I want to do right now is actually do some back-to-back -back runs with the VVT on and off to see if it actually shows in the torque curve. Uh, now my VVT is just on a VVT base map, to be honest. It's not tuned, but it is on. I hope that it gives me better spool, but I have not had a chance to hop on a solid state dyno yet. Steady state dyno, which which can really help dial in that VVT angle. But I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm, we're just out here. So I'm just gonna mess with it and have some fun. And of course, before you change anything in your tune, just save a copy, just in case. You can always revert to it later. So that there is the base VVT map. That's the cam advance map on the base tune. But now one thing to note is it's got a bunch of advance down here at 2000 and below. My VVT will not kick on before like 2500 RPM. I don't know why. The oil pressure seems fine in the motor. Maybe it's a VVT issue, but it's not really that big of a concern because rarely do I need a bunch of power at 2500 RPM. So Anyways, just, just something to keep in mind when I show you the dyno, that it's kind of irrelevant below 2500, which the dyno might actually show that. We'll compare these back to back, all else the same, the only change being VVT on versus off. green is VVT off. So as suspected, right around the mid 4000 range, 4600 or so, there is a dip in torque with no VVT. And that's only about five foot pounds. But remember, we're dealing with NA here. I'm going to mess around with the angles some more, and I'm definitely going to redo this test after I hook all the turbo stuff back up to see what kind of difference it actually makes once the power is a lot higher. Holy crap, guys. Okay, I found something interesting. All right. So the blue line is is with the VVT off. The green line is 40 degrees of advance. So you can see it makes less power everywhere. I mean, it's only a tiny bit, but look at the top end. Oh my God, 27 wheel horsepower less by running the, the cam advance at 40 degrees all the way to red line. I don't know if you guys knew, but VVT is designed to help with bottom end and mid range, and you typically run zero advance up at the top end, and this is exactly why, 120 wheel horsepower compared to 93. I knew the car felt like it was struggling bad when I turned it up to 40. So if I just check it out here, this is with VVT at zero, 20, and 40 degrees, and it definitely makes the most power at 20 degrees in the mid range and then it starts to fall off in the top end. And that's basically where you would taper the VVT down to zero and make more power up top. So that's pretty rad. You can actually see a difference just out here doing pulls. I'm doing the same pull on the same exact stretch of road over and over for consistency. So even if you don't believe in the accuracy of virtual dyno, which I think those numbers are pretty accurate, it's still a great tuning tool. You can clearly see the power difference. This thing is making like 65 pound feet of torque compared to 85 at redline, just from the cam advance. So this is basically what you'd be doing if you were tuning a set of adjustable cam gears, except with the VVT. It's infinitely adjustable between zero and I think 44 degrees is the max, but just running it at 40 degrees, it didn't make any more power anywhere. It made the most power at 20 degrees. So maybe 20, 25 degrees, I'll play with it somewhere in there in the mid range. And then this thing's pretty much good to go. Now I realize this is getting really boring and repetitive and I'm doing a million pulls to show you guys a five foot pounds of torque difference. So I'm going to end this segment here. And I'm gonna go mess around a little bit. I, I could do this all day. I just absolutely love just playing with the tuning and stuff like that. But um, right now in the video, I'm gonna skip to some draggy pulls. We'll do zero to 60, we'll do eighth mile. We'll see how that compares to a bone stock NB, which I recently added to my power times board. Let's go do some pulls. All right, so what I just realized is that in all of the acceleration clips, the external mic audio 
completely failed. I had no external mic audio, which is why the audio on the poles wasn't that great. Luckily, I had two cameras recording the whole time, so it's fine. But now I'm going back out because I think the car sounds kind of cool and a, and I want to show you guys that. And I ran a 10.01 eighth mile. I know this thing has a nine second eighth mile in it. So I'm going to take it out and I don't know, just go have some more fun. Well, that's uh, pretty much what I'd expect from a relatively stock Miata, I guess. Craig, why would you spend like two hours NA tuning your turbo car? I don't know, because it's fun and interesting, and I found out some cool stuff about the VVT. So there's that. I was actually able to gain five to seven foot-pounds of torque from 4,800 to like 5,400. I found out that instead of dropping the VVT down to zero at 5,000 RPM, like the base map does, if I actually extend it out to like 5,600, it does make higher torque up to about that RPM, and then it drops off, and then at zero degrees, all the way up to red line, it ends up making, you know, the same as it was before, because it was always zero degrees up there. So that's just kind of cool, and I found it fun. So I figured some of you guys would like that information. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this booze vlog. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the Greg Peters channel. We got more random little Miata bits coming as I make them, of course. And I will see you next one. I, I will see you next one. It was such a good take. I will see you in the next one. Peace.